All right, so we're gonna try a couple different things here. So um, back to the 4066 um, R and the, uh, or the electric actuator to uh, control um, the quick attach. So what I've got here is I've got the electric actuator that I ordered, or the linear actuator that I ordered, and this is the one that came in that deer kit. You clearly you can sell, you can tell the one that came in the deer kit is a lot longer. Uh, it's, it's approximately an inch longer, uh, which is the inch that we needed, okay? The other biggest difference is after a, quite a bit of discussion with Progressive Automations, this is where this, this came from, and undoubtedly this is where the deer version came from. Um, they could not make this a, um, a three-eighths like I, I wanted. Um, the, easy, the smallest they could do is a half inch. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to bore the, the pins out um, or the openings out on the quick attach. Not a too terrible big deal. Um, so what I'm, what I've, the ch couple challenges that I've been facing here uh, with designing is I've got to put a relay in there. Uh, these things draw about 20 amps and I really don't want 20 amps running through the switch. Um, so I've got to figure out where I want to put a relay and, and do a couple other things trying to design the electrical outlet. Um, so what else I did is originally the one, you know, I'll just take the deer one and I'll put it to the side for right now. Um, so this is the end that comes on uh, the actuator. And this is, these are the um, wires. So these are, I believe, 10 gauge, uh, 12 gauge, something like that. Um, the only problem is, is they don't mate all that well with the quick connects like this right here. So as part of the original um, purchase of everything, I actually bought this kit right here, uh, AT407234. Um, and this kit actually contains, this is the wiring harness. So for like 85 bucks, you get this little pigtail right here. I thought it was a full wiring harness uh, from the from the front of the tractor all the way to the switch. Um, but it is not, it's just the pigtail here. And what's special about it is it has this end right here on it, which connects it to the uh, multi-pin thing the multi-pin attachment, however you want to call it. So what I did is you actually can pull this plate off right here. Uh, if you can see that, pull that plate off um, and then just unplug the old one and plug the new one in. Now I thought about going ahead because I actually have all of the uh, connectors. I actually have a kit. I bought this uh, from Eastwood. So let's see here, open it up. So I actually have a connector kit um, that I'm going to use for this, but the, these connectors weren't quite uh, large enough <clears throat> for um, this wire right here. So I opted instead of, I mean, I'm not going to take a part back that you get, you know, 25% back on, or you have to take a 25% restocking fee. That just seems dumb to me. I could sold it or something like that. So anyway. I have a case of the yawns today. <clears throat> uh, took this one off. I'm going to put that one somewhere for future reference if I ever need it. So this is the actuator I'm working with. Have your traditional plug. Um, I actually have all of the bits and pieces and parts that I need for that plug. I've already purchased them. Uh, so here's everything I need. The other end. Stuff like that. Uh, connectors. Spade connectors everything else. So there's those. I have those. So as soon as I decide on how I'm going to run the wires and everything, we should be good to go. This is the switch. Um, this is the switch. I got this from Deer. This would be the correct switch for a 204 or 304K loader. Um, it is just a plain rocker switch. Now the big thing is with these switches is these, the overall size of these switches is larger than the switches for the 4066 stock. Um, so I am gonna have to enlarge a hole, uh, one of the switch holes a little bit. Not that big a deal, and I think it still looks okay. Um, when you're buying these switches, you'll have to actually order. So this is the switch right here. And then you actually have to go ahead and buy the little insert. I'm trying to get it to where somewhere you can see it. 
So you actually have to buy the insert to give it the correct connotation. In case this is AT330500. Um, so this goes in here. I'm not sure. I haven't. I think it just clips in. I'll have to decide the orientation once I um, probably be like something like like that right there. Um, but that's the switch. I think Deer does this, so they don't have to stock numerous switches. Uh, they can just switch. They have to just have to stock the plastic pieces. So. Um, that's it for, for uh, what, we're, what I'm up to now on this. I do have, like I said, some design work to do. I'll go out to the tractor and I'll take the camera and, and show you. Uh, hopefully this video looks decent. I'm borrowing my wife's uh, TI-5 or T5i um, DSLR camera to shoot this video. Because if you didn't notice, in the last couple videos I have a big mess across or something either a hair or a fiber or something like that across the uh, the normal camera I use and I have not had time to take the camera apart and fix it uh, plus I want to explore if I like um, using uh, this camera to shoot videos I'm sure my wife is none too happy that I'm using this but we'll see um, so anyway I will uh, I'll the next part of the video is I'll be out and I'll, I'll show you everything that I'm going to do on the 4066 and where I've come so far. Okay, so here's what um, on the, the front of the 4066. Uh, yes, I have tried to fit the linear actuator in there. It fits fantastic. Um, but what I'm going to do is the linear actuator will go in here. It'll probably face this way. Uh, and wiring wise is the wire will probably actually run um, from here to this to this bar right here, uh, strictly because um, I don't want the wire to get caught up in any of the um, pinch points or anything in there. And then probably what I'll do is I'll actually send the wire up alongside the hydraulic lines um, and then it will actually come out and it'll probably, what I'm going to do is uh, shooting with this camera is kind of hard is I'll have it terminate somewhere in here um, And I will put it on here uh, some in some form or fashion um, So I can easily get at it to un disconnect um, the uh, The when I disconnect the loader I can disconnect um, the linear actuator at the same time Another one of my future projects, just while I'm here, is I've got to get the single point attachment um, for uh, the hydraulics. I've done some research on that. Unfortunately, there's no easy way or easy place to put it um, without either blocking views or something like that. So that'll be a, that'll be one of those things that I, I have to continue to uh, think about and discuss. So um, then probably what I'm going to do is the, the power will, I haven't decided if it's going to come from the battery or if it's going to come from the fuse block. So I'll show you what fuse I'm planning on using. So in the tractor itself, um, there's a fuse panel right here. All right, so my intent is to use this 20 amp fuse. It should be a 20 amp fuse. Um, this would normally go to the trailer lights, uh, but I don't have a trailer light hookup. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to use that, um, for, uh, the power for the, the, uh, linear actuator. The linear actuator does draw 20 amps. Um, so that, I think that's how I'm going to route it. Uh, I'll have to put a relay somewhere. That'll be a relatively small relay. I might actually just mount it somewhere in here. Uh, some, something like that. Um, so really important point um, about, oh, about all of this. Uh, so the linear actuator that I purchased is, it's a 3,000 pound force linear actuator. Um, you can't, with 3,000 pounds of force, that's a lot of force on those tabs um, up here on the front of the tractor. And I was just thinking about this as I was taking the fuse box off. I'm not liking how this thing focuses. 
Um, so fortunately, the way I designed and the way they were actually able to build the linear actuator, it's limit stopped internally. Uh, so I have no, I run, I do not run the risk of breaking off the tabs with 3,000 pounds of force on them all the time uh, because they are cast metal. Uh, so that certainly lends itself to potentially uh, having some some issues, uh, continuously having 3,000 pounds of force uh, with, on such a small space. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem which I think is, is really good. So um, I think that's it for right now. Oh, I gotta show you where I'm gonna put the switch. That can't be all for right now. So I think looking at my control panel here, I think most likely I'm gonna put the switch right here. Um, Cause I'm not gonna, the, these are the continuous flow for the rear SCVs. Uh, so I think that by putting it right here, um, these are switches I don't use very often, and then I, if I want to have any more, I can put those in there. So um, that's uh, that's how the linear actuator project is coming. I just have some electrical design. I have to teach myself about electronics, stuff like that. Uh, so we should be good to go. Um, hopefully in the next couple weeks, I'll get all those that laid out, the parts set up, and uh, I'll install it so we can watch it. Because right now, what I'm having to do is I'm actually having to use the wood dowel um, that I designed to uh, test everything out in terms of length. I'm having to design the wood, I'm having to use the wood dowel to keep the red pens down because uh, over time they tend to vibrate up. So that's not ideal for any stretch of the imagination. I've lost the, the bucket a couple times recently. So anyway, thanks for watching and updates to come.